Can you guys hear me? Awesome. How are you feeling? Who all wants to go to Maldives? Raise your hands. We just saw something. Right? Cool. There are lots. Okay, so next year, I think there'll be multiple slides then. Okay, then who all wants to go to Prague? Who, want, who wants to party hardest today out here? All of us. Cool. So, the presentation is longer. You will have to bear with us. There are two parts to the presentation, or I would say rather three parts. First is we are all talk, going to talk about, me and Jayant are going to talk about how are we going to accelerate services. Okay. Number two is we are going to talk about COE that will be presented by Radoff. And then the third part is we are going to do live demo of COE. Is that exciting? We all want to know, right? CO, but before going into that direction, what is COE stands for? Okay, you get one mentors for it. Super. So, and is there on the table? Please help yourself. Cool. So, Jent. Good go. afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. How are you all coping after last night's party? I came mentally prepared for a quiet uh, evening, maybe have a drink or two and get back to the room, but amazing. 1.30 in the night and we were still wide awake. Yeah. So, I hope you all are all here. Yeah? Okay. Great. Uh, wonderful opportunity for all of us uh, to be part of the high value ecosystem, uh, uh, especially uh, for all of us for the first time from the ASPL Info family, right? Uh, I thought this would be a great opportunity. We have about all 350 uh, to 400 of us here in one room. Uh, I think a lot of you all have been hearing uh, about ASPL Info services, uh, but I'm not sure how many of you all really know what exactly ASPL Info does. Right? Uh, so I thought we'll take this opportunity to maybe give you a little bit of an, in, uh, you know, an overview. We'll try and keep it as simple as possible so that it's a little easy to understand. Uh, and uh, maybe if you'll have any questions, we can take them offline, maybe over a drink and dinner tonight. Yeah. Uh, so with that, uh, can I? Okay, so uh, with the coming together of uh, ASPL Info and iValue, what are we essentially trying to do? I think yesterday uh, Calvin mentioned that you know when you hit a certain speed and you now need to propel further, what, what is the one thing you need to do is essentially to shift up, right? This association is going to enable us as an organization to move to that next level, right? Change gears and move forward at a much faster pace. Uh, why I'm saying this exactly is essentially for us, um, I think Shrikant said we focus customer first. So let's look at uh, the whole perspective of a customer life cycle, right? When they purchase uh, or when they have a requirement. Typically, what, what is the scenario? You have uh, the customer who comes to you with a problem statement, right? And what is it that they expect? Michael. Yeah, okay. Um, so typically customers end up with either a problem or a requirement that they have. And what they expect from uh, vendors like us is essentially for us to help them identify what the real problem is, help them put a solution together from a pre-sales perspective, design that solution, then kind of find the right, uh, you know, uh, the solutions, OEMs, partners who can help them implement this, right? And then implement this entire solution for them, right? Post that, what happens typically is that after implementing the solution, the customer normally requires us to manage and maintain that for them. Uh, essentially, what normally happens is while customers buy more and more solutions, the environment that they operate in becomes more complex. Now, when the environment becomes more complex, it becomes more difficult for them to have resources in-house to manage that which is when they come to people like us to manage those offerings, right? And uh, typically what happens, environment is set up, you've given them various solutions, which may be okay for at this point of time, but as you move forward, customers need to evaluate whether their solutions are appropriate 
as they move forward in their life cycle. Right? And that's when the assessment services, advisory services come into place. You, you do a study of their environment, see if there are specific gaps. Once you identify those gaps, it leads to, again, further requirements which comes back into the sales cycle. Right? What is the current scenario that we are operating in? Is that I value ecosystem typically addresses this first half of the, the, the life cycle, right? which means that from the identification helping the customer all the way to the implementation phase. Okay? And as uh, Amar, I think this morning mentioned, we are leaving certain things on the table, there, revenue on the table for someone else to come and pick up. And that's essentially where the ASPL Info team comes in. Right? We are able to address the second part of it. And when you put these two teams together, we end up addressing uh, the customer uh, landscape from a requirement perspective completely. Right? No, so guys, as Shikant, Shikant said, right? Customer first. So let's look at, as Jen, and as Jen explained, let's look at customer first today. And it is very important for us to understand the customer. So what, what we were doing is that we were taking, we were doing the best things today as VAG. We're looking at understanding the customer, working with channels, working, delivering the product, implementing the product, PS, getting out. But we also saw and observed over last one year is that customers were also coming back to us and asking us for additional support, additional services, that is sustenance. Can you manage my product for a year? And those sustenance services and managed services is what customer is looking for. So that was first observation. Second observation was engagement. We used to look at the customer, deliver the product, implement the product. We used to do PS, one-time implementation, and out of it. Now, with ASPL jo joining hands and coming together, we are going to manage the customer end-to-end -end and have a solid engagement with the customer that helps us retaining that customer on an annual recurring revenue basis. So that's something is very important for us and that's how we are going to drive it. Yeah, so uh, this is essentially the benefit that comes out of it. Uh, one is what this, by managing the entire ecosystem or landscape of the customer, what essentially happens is that we are able to build much deeper connections with the, with the customer, right? Now, why do I say this? It's because when you start managing the customer, you are working with them on a day-to-day -day basis. You are actually getting into their their entire IT landscape, right? You start working with decision makers. Uh, you are privy to a lot of inside information that they have, and it gives us a complete visibility across their, uh, you know, across their entire stack of uh, infrastructure. Right? This means that tomorrow, whenever there is a requirement from a customer perspective, they will come back and ask us. We have had multiple instances where, um, you know. Just by virtue of us being the services partner in a customer place, the customer just comes back to us and says that you know my ecosystem better than I know it uh, at my end. So you let us know what needs to be done. And they are willing to offload the entire requirements onto us. Right? That is an opportunity for the iValue part of the team, which is the uh, bad part of it. And once that part of it is executed, it leads to more business from the services part as well. Right? So the stickiness with the customer goes up immensely. Uh, and by virtue of us getting into the services aspect, there is an annual recurring business. Now, when you start getting into a consulting approach, right, you are no longer uh, just a vendor for them, but you are actually a part of their ecosystem. You become a consultant to them. Now, when you become a consultant, what essentially happens is that the customer no longer looks at short contracts or you know one-time contracts. They look at contracts which span over three years, five years, eight years, right? I think we're working on a case now which uh, they want us to do a nine-year deal, right? That is annual recurring business because that gives you, uh, like uh, I think Shrikant, you mentioned that 31st is the you know key date for us. This eliminates that and moves you know the entire uh, planning to a much more stable and uh, you know you're able to project much better. And because you start working as a consultant, obviously your GMs go up. And I think that's what's important for all the salespeople here. Right? GMs go up from two points of view because you are 
adding value to the customer they are able to give you higher levels of margin and also the lot of the business that we've been leaving on the table comes into our team right so it's a two two pronged uh, enhancement i thought we'll also just give you some statistics of what uh, uh, we've done over the last year right from a services perspective we have managed and monitored over 23000 devices over the last year phenomenal job done by the uh, services team uh and they have addressed over 40000 tickets uh, anyone here wants you know had, had, i hope everyone has an understanding of tickets or if you want let me explain to you what a ticket is essentially uh, let's assume you have you have your uh, let's say a refrigerator or television or whatever at home and something goes wrong what do you do you pick up call a call center and the moment you log a call with them they give you something and say that here's your ticket number right this ticket number is essentially what constitutes a ticket in the service ecosystem okay right? now why is this ticket so important the ticket basically gets categorized into multiple things it it depends on what is the priority of the uh, issue that we are trying to address right and it also there is a defined timeline for resolution of each of these tickets so if it's a high priority item it needs to be resolved let's say within 4 to 6 hours if it's a less priority item then maybe 24 hours and so on and so forth okay right? so the team has handled over 40000 of these tickets over the last one year across about 48 customers which is a phenomenal job done at the same time maintaining a 98% sla which means 98% of all tickets raised were resolved within the timeline that was committed to the customer yeah so uh, a round of applause to the entire team. uh from an aspl info perspective we've also in the last year provided services uh, across eight countries uh spanning from gambia which is in the west of africa uh to mauritius madagascar uh Philippines we have Nepal uh, of course in the Middle East uh, Saudi and uh, Dubai um, and we also have a customer in Australia so what i'm essentially trying to come at when i'm talking about this is that there is no limitation to the geographies that we can address from a services perspective okay the entire world is your market right now. and uh, you can see this uh, about 54000 gb of logs that were analyzed uh, in the services or the tickets that we managed right uh, another interesting aspect um, was that the team also started uh, getting into some level of automation on the services that we have typically what happens is that every custom every service that we deliver the customer expects certain reports to be given to them or certain analysis to be done and provided to them right a lot of it is routine work our team has i think over the last year uh, gotten to automation of about 16 odd processes amounting to about 1780 hours of man per man time saved right which is a phenomenal job again now what this does is two things one is it saves time it also ensures that the uh, the the uh, predictability of the reports going out the consistency of the reports that go out are all taken care of what that does essentially is improves the customer satisfaction of the market okay so we just come to uh, a high level overview of the uh, so, uh, services stack solution stack that we have with us um so managed infra services right so i'm not going to go line by line right, uh, into this what uh, i'm going to cover here is essentially maybe give you an example of a customer that we have uh, typically what happens is that so the customer that i'm talking about happens to be in the software development space based out of bangalore uh, a mid size company about maybe 800 odd people right uh, they were having challenges obviously because as we mentioned earlier started you know adopting new new technologies into their ecosystem the entire uh, e uh, infra ecosystem became uh, fairly complex right uh, they went to a certain vendor asked them for support because their internal team was struggling to handle it and what did the vendor do took to resources and deployed them there right 
So it wasn't really very different. They had two resources internally. Vendor has replaced those two resources with two resources of their own, right? And they continue to face the same challenges that they faced. That's when we kind of got in touch with the customer, understood the real problems that they faced, and moved them to a model which is typically the focus area from an ESPL Info point of view, which is a shared service model. What benefits the customer essentially gets out of this is that they, are, they technically don't need an IT team in-house. Right? We take over the entire part of it. We manage all the day-to-day -day routine calls. And if you see, normally in a customer ecosystem, every customer would typically have a sysadmin now, or, or one or two you know, member team. This team is able to manage about 70-80% of the calls that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. The problem they face normally is when there are some escalation related issues or slightly higher end technical issues because they don't have the skill sets in house. And for them at that point of time to go and find the resources is always a challenge. Okay? So what we do from the shared service model is that we give them the ability to utilize our L3 resources across all technologies as and when needed because they may not require them all the time. Right? It is only when those 20% of those calls that come up and that's the time we, they have the uh, access to the resources that we have in the house. Right? Uh, this customer has, I think, um, over the last uh, four years that we've managed them, uh, I think the revenues uh, from that customer have gone up by almost 40%. Uh, and I mean, there is uh, every year we go back and ask them for a renewal. It's, you know, a no, no question asked sign off. Also, what happens is that every time they have a requirement for any other product, we are the first people they call to ask for. Okay, so that's uh, essentially what we do. Uh, you will see some logos over there, which is uh, the Zen, ASPL Zen, DB, Pulse, DR, Edge, right? These are certain offerings that we have packaged together for customers, right? And this is essentially where I believe uh, the ASPL ecosystem will enable the channel partners of iValue to make an easy entry. I think all the channel partners eventually want to get into a service play at some point of time. Right? What we have done is we've packaged this into a, so that they can go and sell it like a product offer. Right? Of course, there are certain complexities in terms of customization, but it's a very clearly defined set of deliverables that we will provide as part of these services. The customer doesn't need to invest in anything. They don't need to invest in any um, you know, licenses or software or people or anything of that sort. Everything is provided to them under in one invoice. They just pay every month and we deliver a set of services to them. So what it brings about is also predictability of the revenue that gets paid out from the customer. Manage security uh, space. I think we, uh, uh, I think a lot of the uh, brands here are brands that uh, are also tied up uh, in the iValue ecosystem. We have Splunk and Securonix. Uh, we have the skill sets uh, in house uh, to do the implementation and the management of uh, these tools. Uh, Net Enrich and Google Chronicle is an association that we are currently working on. Uh, I think uh, Shrikant mentioned in his talk, we are looking at uh, moving forward with the white labeled services for the partner ecosystem. And this is a work in progress. We will be ready uh, with this by the end of the second quarter. Okay? Uh, and I think once that comes into play, there's a lot more that we can go and talk to our partners about. Okay? Now in the managed security space, uh, some of the other services that we kind of do is uh, the vulnerability assessment penetration test, which comes under the, if you remember my earlier slide, in the assessment and reporting part of it. Customers need to constantly evaluate their infrastructure, see the kind of gaps that there are. Right. So uh, what we do is we evaluate their uh, security uh, posture and landscape, give them a report on where the gaps are, and get them to address it, uh, uh, or maybe you know kind of help them fix it ourselves. Um, okay, and then we have the third uh, part of our business, which is the enterprise service management. 
enterprise service management is essentially um, uh, a business line where uh, I think we spoke about a little earlier that you know there are 40,000 tickets that our team has handled. This larger enterprises prefer to have their uh, ticketing and all managed in-house. Right? So we have partnered with uh, a couple of brands here uh, uh, in terms of helping them build this entire ticketing system. So the ESM essentially constitutes of three areas, which is the, the monitoring tool, the ticketing tool, which is the service management tool, and the asset management. Right? Uh, so this entire stack is what uh, our team has the capabilities to uh, you know, kind of consult with them, uh, implement these uh, solutions, right? and we have sustain and services also on these products, which means that after implementing it, the customer doesn't really need to build skill sets in-house. They're able to offload that entire thing onto us and we, we manage the entire tool for them. Yeah, then uh, for the professional services, I'll just hand over to Mitesh. So, the most important thing here, right? How are we going to work together? Two organizations, two separate teams, so, and it is, absolutely important that we integrate well and fast, right? So, I just have a point. Okay. So, if you look at this slide, busy slide, but quick things. ASPL has their managed services on top. They are already delivering. That's what we saw. Then we have PST, which is in I, which, is, which they also have and we also have, right? But we are going to offer everything under one umbrella of PS services, right? For the teams are going to get work together to deliver all these products today. And then these are the enhancements that we are going to continue to build on the services, PS and managed services layer so that we are able to deliver services around the global PS, global model, look at the geographies, different geographies all together. So, there's not, going to, there's not going to be any ambiguity on how these two teams are going to work. All of us put together have to understand that this is going to be one team for PS services and all the customer requirements around these services. Yeah. Okay. yeah uh, this is something which is very important when we go reach out to customers. Okay. Uh, our organization is certified on three ISO standards. What this essentially communicates to customer is that we have our systems and processes in place. And any organization that is into the services area needs to have proper, solid processes and systems if we are able to deliver, if we need to deliver consistent services. Okay? So the ISO 9000 is essentially a, a certification which allow, uh, which means that all our documentation from every aspect, every uh, department in the organization follows a certain pro process uh, uh, and this is certified by the, uh, we, we, have, we have our ISO certificates from DMD, which is an international organization. So, and this is the fifth year that we've uh, got this certification. So we have certain rock solid processes that are there very important part which you will normally face uh, questions from customers especially when you tell them talk to them about remote services it is the fear of somebody accessing their data right so the iso 27000 addresses that issue that essentially states that we have very clear processes and policies in place in terms of how we handle any data that we manage okay? and uh, this is something which not too many vendors have you will normally have, you know, the, just the ISO 9000 part of it, but we as an entity have all three uh, certifications in place. Uh, so that's something that I think uh, is is uh, is a talking point when we go to customers. And uh, just to kind of recap, uh, I think the association of ASPL with iValue essentially is going to drive deeper engagements with customers help us you know build an entire ecosystem right that uh, where we can now push towards the uh, you know the the agendas that we are uh, kind of trying to target 
and build an entire ecosystem uh, for all of us to uh, you know leverage on it, right so with that uh, i thanks everyone i'll hand over to mitesh for the coe